What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, we'll be doing our live stream 9 o'clock Eastern. Hope you guys tune in. It's still We are still recovering and going through the seven stages of grief for the death of another Dallas Cowboys season. And I've heard from a lot of you great fans that are tired and fed up. My my buddy, Joseph Heatherly, shout out to Joseph Heatherly, who um, he's actually <laughs> he's actually sending me some Civil War pistols that we're going to actually have here on display at the Red Brick House. And <laughs> he had a bet with the uh, postmaster um, about the Cowboys and the Eagles, in which case he ended up winning the shipping for this on free for free until he went double or nothing and we lost this weekend so he ended up having to pay for it after all <clears throat> he is so fed up he said that Jerry Jones will not get another one of his cents not another penny zero zilts zingo nothing nada He's just fed up. He said, I, he's like, I'm sorry, I can't even watch your show. He's like, I, I just, it's just too much. And talking to, like I said, many of you guys, and I've got Wade, who's definitely going through all of these things. Wade's first reaction was just fire everybody, fire all the coaches, fire the players, you know, tear it down and start all over. But I have been kind of one saying that actually, What happens with us is something that's been happening for quite a while. Our roster usually has been very top heavy with talent. And the, the, then the rest of the team is kind of like average or below average. And that reflects on the salary cap. I remember back thinking about, and I don't have, remember the numbers exactly, but I remember between Des Bryant and Jason Witten and Demarcus Ware and Tony Romo and a couple other players, you had like eight guys that had 50% of the money on your roster. So when you think about a 53-man roster, eight guys taking it, that means you only have half of the cap left to pay the other 45s, which generally speaking is why you always see the Cowboys signing bottom-tier players. Now, I don't blame necessarily all the players, you know, because Micah Parsons and CD and Dak and those guys are going to earn their money. But we've made a lot of mistakes on paying players that didn't necessarily deserve to be there or hadn't spent the time. I love Tony Pollard, but franchise tagging him, that might have been a mistake. I love the Jalen Smith story. But Jalen Smith had one good year and you knew that he had problems with the foot. And you can go down the line. Zeke Elliott, you said, we're not going to uh, reset the market. You didn't reset it. You blew it out the water. And this isn't something new. You could go back to the Jay Ratcliffe's, the Terrence Newman's, the Miles Austin's, the Marion Barber's. Because what happens is you screw up <clears throat> on one, one salary or two salaries. Then what you have to do is <clears throat> you have to release some of the other players that are good players. Or you end up having dead money. And then, like we are right now, $16 million over the cap, you end up restructuring. See, Dax Prescott's contract, when it was written, wasn't set up to be a $59 million cap hit. In the same way, Zeke Elliott's number was not set up to be a $16 million cap hit. But because you keep having to restructure for other mistakes, sooner or later, the bill comes due and you've got to pay those debts. And that's where we are with a lot of those. Do you know that we still have um, $6 million next year of Zeke Elliott's money? Yeah, we paid him this year $6.5 million, $6.5 million next year. And those are things that screw you up. But beyond that, there's a misnomer that the Cowboys were a loaded team. And I dare say that you actually have to look at, say, the defense. And we'll just focus on the defense right now and say that the defense was actually overrated. And if you look at the numbers of how they played against bad teams that were offensively challenged and getting takeaways versus teams that were good that didn't turn over the football, that could run the football, you could see all the deficits. I mean, let's be honest here. You know, Micah Parsons is a great player, incredible player. 
but he's lightweight, and when you have to run and there's not other guys picking up the slack, he is not as good. He cannot change the game by himself. Your defensive line is okay. You've got a lot of guys that are fast that can rush the quarterback, but then you are exposed when teams run. Why are they exposed? Because your linebackers aren't there. They're not there. You don't have linebackers. You you relied on Leighton Vander Esch, who got injured, and you're looking at a rookie in Overshone who got injured the first week. And then after that went down, and, and the sad part about this is, Wade, and you know, Wade, this is where I keep kind of saying, you you have guys that are all pro, like Deron Bland. Now think about this for the Cowboys. We ended up losing Overshone first week. We ended up losing Diggs, you know, a couple of games in. You didn't really address the linebacking situation, and you lose Leighton Van Der Esch. You draft a guy to help plug a hole in the defensive line, and he's not productive. Deron Bland ended up being all pro because he ended up taking, you know, getting the interceptions. But the reality was is a lot of those games – you know, it was like every week he'd get a pick six, get a pick six. And that's the headline. But after all that pick six record, you saw him being exposed where he was not covering well. He was literally there at the right place at the right time a couple times a game making plays. And when the Cowboys defense couldn't make those plays because they didn't have the talent. And you can't look across the board and say, you know, Demarcus Lawrence is you know really good, but he's going to be 32. Uh, Micah Parsons is really good. He's, you know, well, he's great, but he can't do it by himself. And Stephon Gilmore, he's still pretty good, but he's older. So people look and act like we are all pro throughout the team. And I honestly say that, Unfortunately, because the defense played so well against teams like the Giants, that it's a misnomer that the team was loaded with talent. And they're not. They have a lot of holes that need to be addressed. And honestly, as you're killing Dan Quinn, the fact that he was able to do what he did without linebackers, basically taking safeties and making them linebackers, without elite talent all over the place at each of the levels, quite frankly, surprised that they did as well as they did. Now, could we have done better in the playoffs and should have? Yes, we did. But you have to look at this and say, we have a lot of places that need to be addressed. And we can't address them with journeymen, bottom line, free agents. Linebacker is a key spot on the field. If you don't have linebackers that can scrape and that can stop a running back in his tracks, bro, I'm going to run on you all day, and that's exactly what happened. People just were able to run all over the Cowboys. Now, we've got places that <sighs> running back, we still need help on the offensive line. You need help. You're going to need help on the defensive line, maybe even edge rushers, because, you know, Dorrance Armstrong, as well as some of the other edge rushers, are free agents. Um, you definitely need help at linebacker. And if you think that you're going to be able to go into the draft and get yourself a quality starting running back, that you're going to be able to get a quality middle linebacker, that you're going to go through and get a quality offensive lineman, as well as an edge rusher, and think that those draft picks that you're going to get that are going down the line, starting out at 24, are going to come in and pick up all the slack, that's not going to happen. You're going to have to get some premier players if you're actually wanting or trying to sell us that you're actually about winning. Just are. So don't necessarily kill the coach and the players. They did the best they could with what they had. But when you start talking about playoffs and good teams, you got to fight fire with fire. All right, good people. Appreciate you guys listening. I'm curious to see how long, or I'm curious to see how the Cowboys actually react to what they say they're going to do. 
They say they're going to be different. Well, I want to see it. I truly want to see it. Peace out, good people.